Hi, my name is Michael Levens. I'm the designer behind MetaGolf, a platform game for Windows, Mac and Linux. In this video, I will introduce you to a game engine I specially developed for this game, called Meta Engine. Meta Engine is a physical environment shipped with a set of tools and objects, allowing me to create different kind of two-dimension games. One of these tools, and the first I'm going to show you, is called the Debug Panel. The Debug Panel is mainly used to test map by moving objects, spawn entities, debug operations and get technical information in real time. On the panel itself you can clearly see the number of frames per second. You can also see the number of physical shapes and live particles present in your map. There is also a few options only used for development purposes. This helped me to debug the physical system. By default, when the debug panel is open, you can drag and drop objects with the mouse. While holding down the control key and using the wheel of your mouse, you can choose between a few objects and spawn them in real time on the map. This is actually very useful if you want to test a shoot or quickly move to a given position in the map. Holding down the control button also allowing you to operate from the golf ball camera. While releasing control operate by default on the player camera. In MetaGolf up to 4 players can play at the same time on the same computer. I'm using the function key 1 to 4 in order to add new player in real time. The next and most important tool available in Meta Engine is the built-in level editor. By default, three panels are open. The toolbar panel, where you can choose between a range of tools and options. The object inspector, used to modify properties and values of selected objects. And the tile map editor, used to choose the working layer and draw backgrounds environment on the grid. You can close and reopen these windows at any given time but also minimize them to create more working space. Mind that if you close the toolbar panel, it's like pressing the F8 key again, which will close the level editor and resume the current game. I will explain briefly how is working the level editor later in this video. But before that, I would like to take a moment to explain you a few elements used to create levels in MetaGolf. This map is called Laboratory. Of course, it's not a true level, but simply a room where I experiment a few ideas and test my new objects. One of these objects is the trigger button. You can see some of them at the bottom of the screen right now. A trigger button can be linked to various objects and trigger default behavior. There is two kinds of trigger buttons. The default one, where you actually press to activate the behavior in a constant way, and the switch one, where you simply switch on and switch off the default behavior. The next object is the special field. Special fields have different colors, icons and orientation according to their functions and relations. The green one is a one-way field. Since there is no entities draw on it except an arrow, it's only related to player. As you already guess, this allow any player to cross in one direction, but not on the other. This is a one-way platform. The main difference between a one-way field and a one-way platform is working with any object, and player can pass through it, thanks to the double key down behavior, like this. This shiny object is a player portal. Think about it as a safe checkpoint. That special field is red with Skull's icon and like anything spiky in the game will kill player. To explain the next special fields, I'm gonna spawn a new golf ball right over this portal. This is a golf ball portal. It's used to save your golf ball progression in game. The golf ball can also be destroyed by some object like spiky ground, rabbit or dead field, with an exception for the spiky ball. Blue special field only allow a certain type of entities to pass through them. 
Inversely, the yellow special field only deny access. The special field icon determines which entities is concerned. This one concerned player. This one concerned objects. And this one concerned golf ball. You just need to play a few times to get used to it. This green one-way field only concerns the golf ball. Eventually, there is also a creature concerned special field. You will probably want to use them to keep creatures in a restricted invisible area. The last kind of special field concerns every kind of entities and is working on a physical level. The first one is called a universal repulsor and will repulse anything within its perimeter. Note that you can use a negative force number, like with many parameters, to inverse behavior and create a kind of universal attractor. The next field is an universal accelerator, and like its name indicates, will accelerate anything within its perimeter. You can also reverse the force value, but in this case it's better to simply rotate the field to the desired direction. Finally, the last field is called a universal amplificator. It is used to amplify movement, or in physics terms, the so-called moment of inertia. You will probably want to use these last two fields to be sure nothing gets stuck in tunnels or in various other situations. For example, when the zero gravity mode is turning on. There is also a version of the universal fields, but only concerning golf ball, just in case. So this is it for the introduction to the few objects you can use to create puzzles and courses in MetaGolf. Currently there is more than 40 objects to choose from. Each object has a bunch of features and properties to tweak, but that's not all. I'm gonna create a new map to show you the creative potential of the built-in level editor. You must know that currently in MetaGolf there is no need to learn how to script code or anything tedious to create your very own courses. Every official maps in MetaGolf are created using this editor. By default, when creating a new map, a few objects are included. Three audio emitters, ambient sound, win and lose jingle, two super sprite parallax background, four players, and a golf ball. When I created this map, I chose a layer width and height equal to the number of tiles needed to perfectly fit the screen. Each map is surrounded by an invisible enclosure you will have to extend at least the main layer to create a larger map. The first thing we are going to create is a bit of scenery. An easy way to do this is to use the tile map panel like any other painting program. The left mouse button will draw any selected tile, while the right one will select a tile from the current selected layer. If you right-click on an empty space, you actually set the tile eraser to. Now that I created a basic ground, I can resume my game and see what happened. Nothing, my player refused to consider this as a ground. This is because a layer is just considered like an image, there is no physical shape assigned to it. In Meta Engine, physical shapes are separated from graphic content. Let's create a contour shape around our ground visual thanks to the Ground Edge Polygon tool. Remember, always draw a polygon in clockwise fashion to create shapes. Counterclockwise would create holes. From these simple principles, you are already learning how to design a few parts of a map. Try to experiment drawing on different layers. Most objects are drawn just after the main ground layer. By drawing on the foreground layer, you can actually cover things up. 
Let's save our current map by clicking once on the disk icon in the toolbar. By the way, each layer have its own set of parameters. You can absolutely provide your round tile images, set different size of tiles for that image, extend the layer size from here, or set parallax behavior through there is specific object for creating parallax. You will also be able to change the ambient look and feel by changing the rendering color component to create night map for example. Modifying the main green layer will affect the rendering color parameters of each object present in the map, except for the super sprite object which is specially designed for that purpose. We've just tried our map, so I suggest you each time to reload in order to replace every object in its initial position or then you could potentially miss things in your scenery. Let's say we want to reshape or groom the edge a bit. I want to add a slope by the end of it. I switch to the polygon tool to select our edge, thanks to the middle mouse button, and drag and drop existing point with the right mouse button. You can also add new points to the existing polygon shape by holding down the control key and click the left mouse button. Even if it's working, that's probably not the best way to create curvy slope in this editor. It's time to play a bit with the Object Inspector. The Object Inspector is in fact just a tool to explore object properties. The first part of that panel is composed of a list of objects you can place in your scene by using the Creator tool. The second part of that panel is made of two columns named Properties and Values. This is where you set parameters for each selected object from the editor view. As you can see, polygon edge are also considered as object. I will now create another ground edge, but this time I disable the grid functionality. That's why I can freely create and move points or objects in the editor view, no more snapping effect. Don't forget that you can remove point by pressing the delete key while hover it. Now let me show you an important feature of Polygon Edge. If you give opacity to your polygon, you are now able to texture that object like any other object. And with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to draw border correctly. This is the most practical way for drawing natural shaped ground. Now I'm talking about the Object Creator tool. Using this tool is pretty much straightforward. You choose an object to create in the object list, you point and click, and you're done. Now if you want to move, resize, or rotate your object, you have to use the first button from the toolbar panel. Moving is done by drag and drop the right mouse button. Notice that values from the Object Inspector are updated in real time. To rotate the object, you need to drag and drop this little circle that surrounds every selected object. Some objects like the player, for example, won't rotate in any direction. This is by design. Finally, to resize the object, you can eventually do this by modifying the Object Inspector value or holding down the control key before drag and drop your object with the right mouse button. If you like to select an object without moving it, then simply press the middle mouse button like in the Polygon Editor tool. If you need to place object with more precision, you can always zoom in and zoom out with the numeric plus and minus key, or page up and page down. You can reset the zoom value by using the numeric multiply or the on key. Moving the editor view with the arrow keys, holding shift will scroll faster, holding alt will scroll slower. 
MetaGolf also comes with a great particle editor. Clicking on this wand icon will open the particle editor. There is a few controls over here, I won't explain you everything, but to summarize you can import your own particle images, create emitters, particles, transforming and rendering effect, then use them later in objects using particle. Each parameter can be interpolated through time, and particles can be laid out on specific layers, follow camera, burst in explosion, orient themselves, etc. You can get more help or shortcut by displaying the editor help panel with the F12 key. It's basically saying the same thing I'm telling you in this video, with a few more precisions. Finally, I would like to talk to you about the last available tool, the skin editor and the audio editor. Basically, consider these two panels as resource managers from where we are going to load custom images and sounds for your level. A level is generally just a folder that you drop in your map folder to get new courses in game. It's composed of few XML files and should be shipped with your custom resources inside. Every images, animations, sound effects or music can be customized. For this example, I will import two images present in my map folder. You simply need to provide a name for your resource. As you can see, you can choose between a wide range of common image formats. I personally prefer using PNG format, for quality reasons. Pressing return on the URL field will calculate the width and the height for you. You can also add sprite sheet animation frame as skin. Some game objects need to have a specific amount of frame to work correctly. Image repetition is mainly used if you want to transform your image in stretchable texture or fill polygon shapes. Filtered image simply smooths your image when scaling or zooming on it. Do not forget to click the apply button each time you change something in there. On the audio side, I will simply import Metagolf music in Ockvorbis format. You can also import WAV if you like heavy things. Name it, and because it's a music, select the loop options. For a sound effect, I would have chosen the hardware option for trying to reading this sample from the sound card. It's actually faster. Music are generally too heavy for this option. For ambient sound or music, it's pretty easy. You just have to place an audio emitter object on your scene. This is theoretically an invisible object that will play your sound in a defined area or everywhere if you choose it to play it like a music or an interface sound. This object, like many other, do have visual and physical attributes, so eventually you can use it as a dynamic object if you want. One interesting feature is the minimum and maximum playing rate. By setting these two values, you can actually choose or randomize the playing rate of your sound. This is mainly used in object sound effect to create spectrum variation. I will now assign my resources to create object. It's just a matter of choosing from a list of names. That's why it's important to name your object correctly. For the hit sound effect, I will choose one of the available default sound. This object will resize to fit the dimension of my image but on some objects it may only be used as a texture display. I can also change the physical attributes of my customized object, making dynamic or static. Static objects don't have any density and won't react to gravity or forces. In this case, I will simply change the restitution values so my newly created object will be a bit more bouncy. I resume the game and now when I drop my logo, a new sound can be here, and its physical reaction is radically different. Now, imagine that you want to customize more in deep your scenery. To add parallax, canva, or attach images to your map, you should definitely use the super sprite object. Super sprite object is very superior sprite drawing system, independent from the drawing layer system. As you can see, there is a huge list of options and properties with this object. 
So I will stay very simple by just using my previously loaded resource and place it all I want in my level. Super Sprite and Particle are the only one object that can be placed on five distinct layers. Now, with all these tools in your hand, you should be able to create your very own courses. So this is it for the introduction to the Meta Engine. My name is Michael Levens, Meta Engine is still a work in progress. I'm working alone on this project since quite a moment now. My biggest wish apart from finishing Meta Golf, of course, is to create an independent video game studio and working on a more ambitious indie games projects. If you want to try the game, you can go straight to metagolf.net and download the current public beta version. If you have any suggestions or find a bug, you can send me an email over the website, use the Facebook page or register to the forum and get involved in the community. If you want to help me, you can already pre-order a full registered license key that will allow you to play more courses, create and save maps from the built-in level editor as well as loading and sharing them. Of course, that full registered license will give you access to updates and the final version when available. I hope to get many feedbacks and support from your side. Thank you for watching and bye bye!